In this video, we're going to cover project two in our three project series. This one is uh, referred to as bitmap to vector conversion. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with these two terms, bitmaps are images um, that we might find on the internet, um, images taken with a digital camera. They could come in a variety of file formats, uh, JPEG files, PNG files, uh, TIFF files, GIF files are all forms of uh, bitmap files. Um, one of the unique features of Archem Express is the ability to take a bitmap file and convert it into a vector file so that we can create machinable lines for that particular uh, image. So uh, as you can see on our screen we're open to Google. I use Google for uh, doing most of the searches because there's some particular information that Google will provide that I don't find some of the other search engines do. So in the Google search bar, I'm just going to type in what I'm looking for. So in this particular case, I'm going to maybe look at uh, looking for uh, some dragon line art. Uh, and I'll maybe even define it a little bit more and type in the word Chinese. And we'll just hit the enter bar. And I'm going to go to images. So as you can see, there will be several images um, that meet the criteria and probably in some cases several thousand images and as you can see as I scroll down my screen you'll see there are lots of different dragon images that we have uh, to choose from. So there's three basic criteria that we're looking for when we want to do a bitmap to get vector conversion in order to make sure that we have the best result. Um, and one of the nice things about Google is that a lot of this information is visible to us as soon as we look at the image. So the first thing we're looking for is resolution. Normally we don't want to have anything with a resolution below 300 by 300 dots per inch or DPI. And you'll see in Google, as I move my cursor over each one of these, uh, it gives me what those um, parameters are. So this is the dots per inch or the DPI for each of these images. And you can see all of these are very high resolution. Uh, and all of them would work quite well for uh, what we're intending to do. The second criteria that we're looking for is we want to try to find an image that doesn't have a lot of um, fine, fine detail. If we can scroll back up to the top of our list here. If you look at this image, for example, you can see, uh, if I click on it and look at a larger version of this, you can see there's a lot of fine detail here. Now, uh, as we become more accustomed to using our CNC machine, we will be able to uh, compensate for those um, issues. If we have an image with fine detail, sometimes we can resolve um, losing the detail by just slightly over machining it. The problem that we have is that if we try to machine something with this fine a detail, what you're going to see is that if your material is not perfectly flat, then you're going to have areas that don't machine, or in other cases, areas that machine a little bit too deep. And in either case, that's not uh, an outcome that we want. If you look at this one beside it, it's a little less fine detail. In fact, this one might work quite well. Um, and uh, uh, again, our interest is in making sure we don't have something with uh, extremely, extremely fine detail in it. The third thing that we're considering is um, the colors that are being used. In an ideal world, anything that's black and white is our best option because the least number of colors that we can deal with, the better off we are. Um, the other issue that we want to try to avoid is anything that has what we would refer to as a graduated screen. If I look at this one, for example, as you can see the difference in shading between the red and the orange, this can be somewhat troublesome for the software. As we convert this from bitmap to vector, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to drop out colors until we're down to a two or a three color image. And in this case, where you've got this graduated screen, the software will have a hard time determining where to draw the lines. Um, because it has to define where to separate these colors out. So as we scroll through these, based on that criteria, uh, if you look at this one, for example, it meets the minimum requirement of 300 by 300 DPI, but you can see this uh, watermark and behind it may be somewhat troublesome for us. So we'll go down a little bit further. This image here has nice heavy lines. You can see that the black is, is quite heavy, uh, doesn't have a lot of super fine detail, and it's 600 by 365, so it meets that criteria. So we're going to select this image. And one of the common mistakes that's made is, is actually saving the image as you see it right here. Um, this is actually not 600 by 365 DPI. It's actually a low resolution icon that represents the image. We need to click on View Image. And when we do so, what we should be looking for is just the image by itself on our screen. Once we have that, 
just going to si click, simply right click, save image as, and we will call this Dragon 1. And you can see that it's a PNG image. I'm just going to throw this on our desktop for now and save that.